In the last video, we looked at a group of data that was already placed into bins for us, into classes. But what if you have to make the classes yourself, like say on a project or something like that? What do you do? So you start off with, you have to choose your first class's lower class limit. Now, you can do this a couple ways. Um, you can choose the smallest observation in the data set, um, or a convenient number that's kind of close to that. Like, when my convenient, I mean rounded, you know, rounded to the nearest integer, things like that. Um, but it has to be lower than the smallest observation because you have to fit that smallest observation in that first bin. It's often nice for um, ratio data, for ratio data, to choose zero as the first class's lower class limit. Not always, but sometimes. If you get close to zero, then you might as well just go with zero. All right, so now um, we need to determine the class width. So you decide on how many classes you want. Generally, you don't want too many and you don't want too few. You, you, don't, you want to be kind of Goldilocksy about it. So you want it somewhere between 5 and 20 classes for most data sets. The smaller the data set is, the fewer data classes you're going to have. And then you decide in your class width by computing your this formula right here. You take your largest data value minus your smallest data value and you divide it by how many classes you want. Let me change that to desired number of classes because that's what it really is. You don't know if it's going to work out perfectly. So it's, you're going to round it up to a convenient number. If it comes out like, you know, 32.3, round it to 35, make it something nice, right? By convenient number, I mean like a multiple of 5 or um, 10 or 100, things like that. And note that um, you might not get the exact number you were looking for. There, I just wrote that up, and I'll change the notes for future. So um, you're going to round up to the nearest convenient number, multiples of 5, 10, 100, you know, things like that. Um, definitely an integer, right? I like this way. Um, an integer, or often, let me put this say, often an integer. Um, colon or semicolon multiples of 5 10 15 or 100 that's all nice there we go so now let's look at this the following table shows the number of ABs that's at bats for each batting member of the 2013 2014 Jackson College men's baseball team and just in case you're not familiar with baseball an at bat is when you walk up to the plate and you um, let me put this, plate appearances that don't include um, bases on balls being hit by the pitch sacrifices interference or obstruction all right so here they are in all their glory right there and then we're going to find the class width now I put them in order from highest to lowest because I'm very, very nice. So we're going to find the class width using this formula. Class width is the largest data value. That's 148. Take away the lowest data value, which was 2. And we're going to divide by 10 because it's said to do 10 classes. All right, so 146, 146 divided by 10, that would be 14.6 like that. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to use zero as my lower class limit because it's said to right here. See that? Zero as the lower limit of the first class. So I'm going to start this first class at zero. And then we're going to fill in as we go. So I'm going to round this up to about 15. That seems sensible. Right. Okay, so I'll do 0 to, now here's the thing, don't fill in 15 over here on the right because that's not correct. This is 14.99999. This is 15. Then the next one's 30. The next one's 45, 60, What I'm doing is I'm filling in all my lowers first. Zero. Zero plus 15 makes 15. 15 plus 15 makes 30. 30 plus 15 makes 45, and so on. Now I'm going to go back in and fill in all my upper class limits because I'm crafty like that. Okay. 
Well, if this is 15, then this one has to be 14.99999, right? Then if this one's 30, this over here has to be 29.9, right? And I'm going to round here, 44.9. Uh, 59.9. Notice these are also 15 apart, just like the other ones were. And then this one, you might be thinking, well, I don't have the next number. True, but you know where it would have been, right? These are all 15 apart. 119 and 134 are 15 apart. So you just take 134 and add 19 to it, and you're going to get 149.9. Now you got to go back and count how many are in each group. So in the first group, 0 to 14, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five batters in there. 15 to 29, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there, because 29 counts in that group. So that was 4, right, and so on. The next group only has one in it because it ends at 44.9, so only the 32 fits in there. These two guys are too high, so 45 and 46 they don't count in the they count in the next group. So let me put those two there. 60 to 75, 74.9 technically, right there. That's two. Um, let's see, 75 to 89, that's one, two, three of those, and then 90 to 104. That's two of those. 105 to 119. That's two. 120 to 134. That's one. And 135 and beyond, that's two. And there we have it. And we ended up needing all fifth or all ten of these classes, right? If we rounded a lot, like if let's say it rounded up to 20 or something like that, I wouldn't have done that for this data set. But if I had, I would have ended up with like, you know, seven classes or eight classes, much less than I was looking for. So there we have it. All right, we're done with that part. Let's look at this histogram. So now that we know how to read tables, right, this is reading a table, and how to make a table of continuous data, then how do you look at a histogram of continuous data? So the following histogram shows the ages of workers who needed to take days off from work due to tendonitis in the U.S. in 2001. And again, yes, in case you're interested, this is real data. So here we have the age of the workers, and here's the relative frequency, right? And you can see that these are grouped into bins, right? So you have continuous data here. Your age is continuous. Now, when Excel constructs these graphs, the values on the horizontal axis are often the classes rather than individual numbers. So the left edge of the first bar in graph 2, so this guy right here, this left edge right there, is 25. Oops, left edge of the first bar. Oh, sorry, first bar, sorry, this bar, 15. That's 15. The, left, the right hand edge is 25 because that's the left hand edge of the next bar. Then this is 35 right here for that bar right there, and this is 45, and that's 55, and that's 65 right there. So that's where those vertical bars lay on. All right. What number represents the ledge, la, left edge of the last bar? So the last bar is over here. It's 55 to 64.9, so that would be 55. The right edge of the last bar is 65. Now I know it's really 64.99999, but that's not really the way the numbers are going to work, right? The bar itself is at 65, and this bin is right the way up to it, okay? That's just the way histograms are going to get constructed. Technically, there's really no width between 64.99999 forever and 65, so we won't talk about that. All right, so what percentage of workers need to take time off due to tendonitis are aged 15? Here, let me put this in real quick because this is bothering me. So it's technically 64.999999 forever. Okay. All right, what percentage of workers that need to take time off due to tendonitis are aged 15 to 24? That's right in here. So that would be, looks like 10%. Technically, it was 10.2%, but you would never have known that. So let's say about 10%. All right. Now, what percentage of workers of needed to take time off due to 10 nights are exactly 19 years old? We don't know, right? We, we 
do not know because all um, those workers aged 15 to 24.999 were lumped into one bin we have no way of knowing how many are exactly 19 or any other age for that matter. And there we go. Done with that. And now you're seeing with this the, the real disadvantage with the histogram for continuous data, which is that you don't know how many are in each group. I mean, you know how many are in each group, let me put it that way. You, you know that there's 25% in here, but you don't know if they're all 25, if they're all 33. You have no way of knowing. You don't know the original raw data numbers, nor do you know their frequencies. You're just stuck like that, right? And that's kind of uncomfortable, right? We'd like to know how many people were 17, how many people were 18. Heck, how many people were 18 and a half? You don't know. You don't know any of that information because everybody was lumped into groups. Now let's move on to a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is a graphical display of quantitative data along with their frequencies. And what they do is they take the rightmost digit and that makes the leaf, and then all the other digits form the stem. And you often round the number so that they can fit this structure. But it's a technique used um, to, oh, split stems is a technique used to keep stem and leaf plots from being too crowded. For example, if there are two stems, then leaves zero to four go in the first one and five to nine go in the second which actually is taking the place right here. Um, again, real data. This is the sh prevalence of chlamydia by state in the US. So you might be looking for some kind of key, but the key is right here. The decimal point is two digits to the right of the colon. OK? All right, we'll explain what that means in just a second. So let's go here and just figure out how many there are first. So this is the 50 states and the data set also includes DC, the District of Columbia, Washington DC, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, which are US territories with quite large populations in the case of Puerto Rico. So that means there are how many altogether? Well, there are 50 states plus Puerto Rico, DC and the Virgin Islands, that makes 53 numbers altogether. Now, that key, that key is kind of tricky. What is it telling us? It tells us the decimal point is two digits to the right of the colon. So if you look at 11.0, it's 11, 0, and then there's two digits more. Let me put this right. One, two digits to the right of the colon would be right there. So it's not really 110, it's 1100. Zero, zero. And then remember, this is a rate. It's per 100,000 residents. Okay. Now, all right, that might be a little bit confusing. Let me give you another one. What about um, here? The 7-7 seven, seven, or the 7-6, seven, for example. So, or um, let me grab this 6 or here. This 2-3. Oh, 2-3 is good. So 2 colon 3 is actually 230.0, right? which I guess I don't really need that extra zero over there. But I just wanted to see where it is. So the colon was there between the two and the three, but the decimal point is two spots to the right of that. So you go right one, right two, and then you put your decimal point right there. So it's 230 per 100,000 residents. Okay? Oops, I'm having some issues with my font size here. Okay, so that's what 2, 3 means, and that's what 11, 0 means. Now, Michigan has a chlamydia rate of 480 per 100,000. That means we're right there with one of those four eights, four eight. So you got to count how many are above that. Let me do that in a second. All right, there are 16 numbers that are bigger than 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 52, 53, 53, and so on. So that's 16 states. Let me make a percentage out of that. There, it's, remember it's 53 because we're including DC and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So that'd be 30.2%. 
Now, why is this better than a histogram? Well, sometimes it's not, but you can find all the original data. It's not all grouped in a way that you can't figure out what all the data is.